I used to work as a large drug company in the United States. One day, I suddenly realized,、uh, why do we have to develop a synthetic compound and then test them in clinical trials when traditional medicine provides us with a huge untapped resources of potentially effective and safe drugs already? And these drugs have been tested in humans for thousands of years. All we have to do is to apply modern technology to ensure the efficacy and the safety of this compound. Today, we're in Beijing, in the gardens of the Institute of Medicinal Plant Development, to meet with Dr. Cheng Liu. He's using genomics to study the vast collection of medicinal plants and their use in traditional Chinese medicine. Here we are is at the Beijing Medicinal Gardens, one of the top medicinal plant gardens in the world. Its primary goal is to uh, uh, conserve the plant、uh, resources for the nation, and also serve as a base for research and public education. China has a long history in the use of traditional medicine. Yes, actually,、uh, there's、uh, more than 10,000 medicinal plants that's used in the Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, which we call the TCM in short. If you go through the literature, there's more than 100,000 of the medicinal recipes. Three of the most famous ones. Uh, the first one is called、uh, Ben Chao Gang Mu.、Uh, it's actually written by a person named、uh, Li Shizhen in the 16th uh, century. Uh, that is like the、uh, Chinese pharmacopoeia in the ancient China. The second book is Shen Nong Ben Chao Jing. What's amazing about this person is that actually he actually go to the wild and taste all kinds of medicinal plants. So it's the first personal trial. The third one、uh, I would like to mention, which is、uh, connect to the modern drug discovery. The name of the book is called "The Prescription for Emergency Disease." It's、uh, written by a person named Hong Ge、uh, in 340. A lot of modern medicines really have their origins in, in traditional、uh, medicine. Yeah, that's certainly true. Artemisinin is one of the list of the first line medicine by WHO. So it's still very, very effective.、Uh, Dr. Tu Youyou, she actually、uh, discovered、uh, the artemisinin、uh, based on Ge Hong's book. More than 20 years of work, uh, eventually uh, her work won Nobel Prize in 2015. So that's really a great demonstration connecting the traditional medicine and the, the modern medicine today. Is traditional medicine a big business in China? If we add everything together, that's including the traditional medicine. As drugs and also as the functional food, the total sales adds up to 250 billion U.S. dollars. That's a huge number. So, what role does Implant play in this industry? Implant, the full name of Implant is Institute of Medicinal Plant Development, is affiliated with the Chinese Academy of Medical Science. The main mission of Implant is to preserve, develop, and utilize the medicinal plant resources. It's also a collaborating center of WHO in China,、uh, so it's really the leader in the medicinal plant research area in the world. So, is there a chance that some of these original sources would actually become extinct? Yes,、uh, that's actually、uh, a problem. One of the most known example is Renshen,、uh, is the king of herbs. However, the wild Renshen has extinct already. So that's certainly, you know, demonstrate the urgency for us to、uh, take measures to uh, conserve uh, the uh, precious natural treasure. Plants are highly diverse. However, they are morphologically very, very similar. Here we showed、uh, two examples. These medicinal plants have very, very different chemical compositions and also therapeutic effects. This, of course, will cause a problem in the TCM products that's made from them. 
Once we collect the samples from the garden, the next step is to extract the DNA. In order to do this, uh, the first step is to put the leaves into a mortar. In the presence of liquid nitrogen, we use a pestle to grind them. Uh, depends on the texture of the leaves, you might have to repeat the steps a few times. Once we have the leaves grinded, the next step is we retrieve the samples into microcentrifuge tube, add extraction buffers, and then, after incubation, we put the microcentrifuge onto a rotator to make sure the solutions can be mixed very well. After that, we put in the microcentrifuge tube into a centrifuge to separate the precipitate and the suspension. After we get the DNA, the next step is to construct a library to do the sequencing. Once the DNA samples has been sequenced, the FASTQ files can be assembled to get the complete genome. We map the reads to the complete genome. And here in the bottom, we show the ATCG, that's the base of the DNA sequence. This picture here shows the annotated genome. Uh, we can see that outside there's different blocks with different colors. They actually represent different genes for into different functional groups. Once we have the whole genome sequence, we can use all the sequence from genome to do the phylogenetic analysis. And this kind of phylogenetic classification tends to have a very high resolution, uh, which is shown here. And uh, very closely related species can be discriminated successfully. In this example here, we obtained 10 different individual plants and we sequence them. This region can be used to discriminate individual plant that's going to be very, very helpful in terms of uh, uh, ensure the safety and uh, efficacy of TCM products uh, in the future. What inspires you about this work? Um, my background involves both genomics and uh, drug discovery. So it'd be very natural for me to think about uh, applying the genomic technology uh, to drug discovery, uh, particularly for traditional medicine. Where do you see the future of traditional medicine? Uh, in my view, there's really no distinct line between the so-called traditional medicine and the modern medicine. It's really just we look at the same thing, human disease, from different perspectives. Together, I think we can modernize the traditional medicine and uh, make it to uh, meet human uh, medical needs.